I think they are gearing up for the next big move. Okay. And that could come at the expense of IQ. Right. It could be RJ. It could be Grimes. It could be a combination of those guys. So getting DiVincenzo is important so that if you are going to remove some of your depth to bring in a, a more complimentary piece, at least you'll have something left. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're going to end up making a trade that some fans are just not going to like because we like our homegrown talent and we want to see them succeed here. But it's going to come because last uh, trade deadline, there was the interest in Ananobi. This free agency offseason, the interest in Paul George, the Clippers and the Knicks did talk on PG. And so we know they know that the need at the wing is there. They need a strong two-way wing yeah. to take on some of the premier wings in this league and also be a scoring threat to help uh, Jalen and help maybe Julius if he's here or, or even RJ if he's here. They need a strong wing. You, yes, Steven Chenzo can play D. Hart can play D. They compete. They fight. They're gritty. And sometimes they'll use that and their IQ to be assets and above average defenders. But it's, it's something like when you watch this team sometimes and you see bigger wings shooting right over them. You see that need. It, yeah. It's a clear need that, 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 uh, that the team has to address. And so I don't think they're going to jump in on PG, right? I think they did kick the tires on it to see if the price is low enough. As they should have. To get, right, yeah. as they should have. Yeah. You got to do your due diligence. Yeah. But I'm watching this OG Ananobi thing, man. Mm. I just, I'm watching this OG Ananobi thing. I'm not a fan. With Van Fleet going to the Rockets, yeah. it's kind of hard to see where the Raptors are headed right now. Are they going to trade Siakam? He wants a big bag. Uh, they did bring in Schroeder and all these other guys. Trent Jr.'s back. Well, you can't read Ujiri right now, man. And so it's known that OG Ananobi wants a bigger role. He wants a bigger offensive role. He is the ideal wing defensively that the Knicks need. And he just signed with CAA. I'm putting my tinfoil hat on, fellas. No, I feel you. I'm but putting it on. I, my thing is, do we, just, do we concede to their asking price? That's my beef with the whole thing. I feel like we're going to be giving a lot to be getting a, a little. I mean, I, I understand the upside and all that stuff, but... Man, it, we, we were hearing all the rumors about them wanting four picks, five picks, this person and that person. And it's just like you're, you're asking for Jason Tatum type uh, packages for an OG Ananobi. And I think that's my worry. It has nothing to do with him as a player. I, I would love him on this team. I just worry about that asking price. And that's, that's the thing I'm looking at the most when it comes to him. But guys, like, look, I think. Yeah, speak, speak to you, Michael. Oh, yeah, yeah. So for, for OG, though, right? And we were talking about Messiah. And this is why I pushed back. Like last week, what saying is he kind of overrated because at this point, you let Fred Van Vliet walk. We could talk about the whole Kawhi thing, whether you try to get assets back in for him, you know, you trade DeRozan for him. I get it. Uh, the ifs, ands, and like they won that year. They did it. It looks great on him. It all played out. So he looks like a great GM doing that moment. But at this point, when you watch how he's this high asking price for all these players, man, yeah. at some point, no team is doing business with him. And so I think. If, you're, if the Knicks are legit thinking about OG and Anobi and anyone that's interested in getting out there, like, look, even I think, I'm not sure, but like there were some talks about Memphis potentially going after OG and Anobi last, last year, year yeah. right? And it's like, that didn't happen. Although OG would be good on that team, it didn't happen yeah. because I think Memphis is like, yo, you're asking way too much for this guy who's just a role player on your team. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think the reality is for that is that it will drop down. I think there is going to be some, there's going to be a little level market play at this point we just seen what happened for players like yeah i agree this this offseason so i think yeah. that can turn out if the knicks are want, want to be serious about that but that's just in my opinion another marginal move that's not really the one the I knicks agree. like if you're the knicks and you're thinking about og ananobi i like og ananobi as a player i think he's solid versatile you can guard one through four easily some nights you can guard the five especially your backup five he shoots well from three um He's got a little, uh, he's got a little herky jerky uh, motions to his game, right? For me, though, if you really, if you, if you're this Knicks front office and you really, 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 really want to go take that next step, I'm looking at someone like Joel Embiid, right? That's that's what I'm waiting for because Philly at this point, like if you're just gauging what the NBA is doing, what has Philly done for Joel Embiid these last couple of years? Yeah. Ben Simmons, that was supposed to be his running mate. It was supposed to be him, Tobias Harris, and that didn't pan out. You know, they even had Mark L. Fultz. That didn't work out well, although he's on, the, on, on a right track back in Orlando. It still didn't work out in Philly. Now you're talking about, okay, we brought in Doc. 
We're going to do, we're going to have Doc and Embiid and then didn't work out with Simmons. Then you trade Simmons for James Harden. The whole Harden experiment didn't work. Now he wants to get traded. I think he's going to be starting the, off in Philadelphia, as we saw with Brooklyn last, last year. Yeah, but How KD, KD, yeah, with KD and Kyrie, like they requested a trade. I still think they're going to start. I think Harden's going to start this season. I still think he ends up being traded. Yeah. But at that point, if you're Joel Embiid, you're turning 30 soon, don't you want to go compete? What has Philly done for you? So yeah. if and you talk about the CAA connection, you know, you talk about it with OG and Obi. I'm looking at Embiid, and be like, something's going to happen there at some point. At what point will Embiid want to get past the second round? The closest he's ever been was when the Raptors and uh, and Seventy uh, Sixers mm. played, right? And we're talking about the a Kawhi, Kawhi shot. shot. We're talking yeah. about the Kawhi shot with seconds left, and yeah. so that's the closest he's ever been. Talk about uh, wanting to play with Jimmy. Well, if you want to play with someone that's close to being gritty, something like that, smart. Joan Brunson will probably be his floor best. Floor general on, number yeah. 11 Facts. guy he's ever Absolutely. played with. Facts. Absolutely, right? man. Salute to everybody in the chat once again. Hit that thumbs up button for you boys. Let's get these likes up for this Blue Eye Studios, oh, man. The background is looking crispy. We got CPCK and Alex on the one, twos, and threes, man. Salute to everybody in the chat. Uh, salute to Russell Whiskey, a uh, franchise channel member, loyal franchise channel member now of five months. Uh, he says, we need McCal Bridges. Mm. Well, look, man, we, we needed him on draft night, but that ship has sailed, and now, now he's across the water. Now he's across the swamp over there in New Jersey, and so I don't think uh, that we swamp have a dragons. chance there. Yeah. It's not happening. The, the, the full-blown the full yeah. Villanova reunion yeah. will have to wait, man. Yeah. They'll just have to do dinner or meet up at Brunson's wedding or something, man, but <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's just not going to happen with Mikhail Bridges. You know, with, with OG, because there's been this talk – for a while now that he wants a larger role. He wants more of, of responsibility in the offense. My question is, as it relates to the asking price, we haven't seen it yet. Yeah. We, we have not seen him really dip into his bag where you're just like, okay, I can see the potential here. Yeah. Now, yeah, we can, we can part with a couple picks here. All right, maybe you want IQ, you want this. But his game is just not there yet. He can knock down a three. He can get you some corner threes. Shot at almost 40%. He can finish at the rim. Big body, good size, right? The, 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 the length, all, all of that. All of the intangibles that you want in a wing. And then on the defensive side, excellent. But does he have that bag in him? He's working on it. Yeah. But does he have that bag in him where you can definitively say this is his ceiling? He hasn't tapped into it yet, but he's going to get there. I just haven't seen that from him. He's 25, 26, right? So, and that's my thing. And if, if, if the, the, there's a deal with, if we're listening to half of these deals that are out there, if R.J. Barrett is one that's included in that, are you upgrading? That, that's my big question. Are you actually upgrading when you're moving a, a piece like R.J. and that's going to also include picks and another piece? Are you actually upgrading if you're getting a guy like OG Ananobi? And that, that's that's my big question mark with this and why I'm having such a hard time with falling for this whole thing. I agree with you. You listen to it. You play it by ear, see what's going on with you, Jerry. But to Alex's point, who has, who has the Raptors and, and, and Masai Ujiri actually made any kind of business with recently? Nobody. And, and if, if that's not the case, then they lose these guys to free agency. You know what I mean? So... I, I think this is one of those things that you, you try, you see what you can get, but you, you stand pat with what we've been doing so well for the last few years, and that's not jump the gun, especially on a guy like OG Ananobi, where you, if you're giving up a bunch of young talent for a guy that you're hoping is going to be great at 26 hey. years old. I can't do that. I, I, to me, I'm not a fan of it. I can't co-sign that. you got to worry about his injury history, too. That, right? too. Like, he played 67 games last season, but he played 48 the season before that. He played 43 the year before that. Oh, uh, he missed He missed – playing in the championship round when the Raptors won that right. chip. Yeah. So injury concerns are a big thing with him too. So if you're trading these many assets to go get a guy like OG no Ananobi, sense. who's a solid role player at this point, like I, I guess, yeah. but like it's not, you're, you're, that's so much of a risk, man. Yeah. Honestly, like with OG, like if, if the Knicks are really going to be serious about that, they really got to like make sure that they're on the winning end of that trade. Yeah. But, and for, and for, and for we're, we're talking about potential, like saying he wants to get more opportunities like that. We can right. say, like, look at Mikhail Bridges over mm. in, in Brooklyn right now. That's right? fair. We now, like, we didn't, nobody they, really saw that. No one saw that one coming. No one and saw now, it. And now it's like, oh, snap. Yeah. You know, imagine yeah. if you just allowed him to do, the, do that on Phoenix right. and give right. him more touches, right? 
So but who's maybe, really taking the touches from OG? That's the, that, that's the question I keep having. He keeps mm. saying he wants more touches. Who's taking the touches from you? Pascal Siakam is not really that kind of guy that's give me the ball, I'm going to get you mm-hmm. these points. Pascal is uh, plays within the system really well. Mm-hmm. Fred Van Vliet, he, I mean, if you look up his injury history, he was pretty injury prone last year as well. So mm-hmm. he had opportunities. Mm-hmm. So I, I I don't understand that whole I want, you know, a bigger role thing when you have many opportunities with that with Toronto and he hasn't really done much with it. So I, I don't know. I, 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 I It's hard for me to compare the two between him and Mikhail Bridges. I yeah. see what you're saying. But Mikael Bridges, you know, you had you had Book, yeah. you got CP3, yeah. you got yeah. guys that are gonna have the ball in their Aiden hands. Aiden was supposed to be that third dude, right? Mm-hmm. So I, it, I, OG had opportunities. I, I no, those are all fair points, man. Those are all them. fair yeah, points. And like, you could even say though, with all those guys, right? Mm-hmm. The only pushback I would say is that you got if 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 everyone's healthy on that team, mm-hmm. it's gonna be Fred Van Vliet, it's gonna be Siakam. And you know, they got Scardy Barnes. They want to make sure he could be that dude as well. They're expecting him to be that number one option right now. So yeah. if you're OG, you could be like, well, when everyone's healthy, I don't really get that many touches. And when everyone's injured, like, how can you ask me to do everything, right? Even with Bridges out in Brooklyn, they won some games, but it wasn't like he's, wasn't he's not he. that dude yeah. where it's yeah. like he yeah. walks in, it's like, oh, snap. It's like a LeBron yeah. James moment where, okay, he dominates. It's going to be very tough for us, right? 